911, do you have an emergency? Today on Rescue 911, us. He's never going in. Curiosity leads the family pet into danger. That's when I thought the cat wasn't going to make it out. On Rescue 911. If you have cats, you've probably come to accept their eccentricities, just as Judith Keene of Bowie, Maryland, had accepted her cat, Honey Bunny's particular and peculiar habit, until one weekend in April of 1994, when it proved to be more than she could handle. I have five animals, two dogs, three cats, and since I have owned these cats, I have become one of those nutty cat women who have cat jewelry and shirts, and um, I, I even have a shirt that says, my cat is the cutest cat in the world. <laughs> I got Honey Bunny because somebody threw this cat out of the car. He's a very sweet cat, but when he plays, he's a real wrestler. And he does get into trouble. <laughs> Ever since I've had him, he would go down in events. He just likes to tunnel through the house, and he, it's, it's a big adventure for him, I guess. He had always done it, so it never occurred to me that he could hurt himself. I'm telling you, you need to get out of there now. My daughter says he's overweight. He eats only light cat food since he's been a year old, and he's still overweight. Honey bunny, don't be coming in here. I said, honey bunny, I am going to church, and I'm going after dinner, and when I get back, you darn well better be out of there. You know, you can get into trouble in here. This is small. Judith returned home about three hours later. Hi, guys. Hi. Did you get Honey out of here? The first thing I did was go in to see if he was still in there. Oh. Oh, God. At this point, his whole head advanced oh into the vent. Oh, my God. You need to get out of there. I tried to push him back and was unsuccessful. His shoulder seemed very tight, so I figured that he was stuck in the vent. Honey bunny. Oh, honey bunny. I had no idea how to get this cat out of there, and that frightened me. Around 9.45 p.m., Prince George's County Animal Control sent Officer Julius Campbell to check on the problem. He was not making any noises to lead me to think that he was in any discomfort at all and a little area that I could see him through it was just too small for this huge cat to be pulled up through. Oh, right now. With animal control, we're not allowed to tear up anything in your house. Is, um, close that vent in that room there. What I advised her was to give the cat a chance to come out on his own. All right, honey bunny, listen. I did exactly what the animal control person told me. I put the vent cover on and I put a vacuum cleaner over it so that the cat wouldn't keep trying to come out of the hole that he couldn't come out of because he's physically twice the size of it. Okay, come on, honey bunny, come on. You gotta come back this way. Here's I put the can of cat food in there. A 16-pound cat does like to eat. This is not for you. And I had my animals um, come to bed with me. I was up pretty much the whole night. And I came down around 2 o'clock. Oh. And the cat had pushed the vacuum cleaner off, and he was fully into the vent. Now he was really stuck. He couldn't move. By around 5 o'clock, the cat was no longer just meowing. It was yowling. What's going on in here, guys? I felt that I couldn't wake people up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I made it till 6 minute she called, I knew if she was calling me at 6 o'clock in the morning, it couldn't be good. 
Two of the first people Judith woke up that morning were her daughter Susan and her daughter's husband JB, both of whom are veterinarians. And she said, somebody's got to do something, and you need to be over here, A, because I'm a veterinarian, B, because it's her daughter, and she just needed the moral support. He's never going in there. All I could see was his head through this narrow vent opening. Luckily, I could see his pink nose, which I knew meant that he was breathing okay and his color was good. But I knew right away that there was no easy way to just pull this cat out. It was early in the morning, and I didn't have my wits about me, so I envisioned somehow getting some heavy machinery to open up the floor to get the cat out. Judith also got her friend and next-door neighbor, Fire Chief Jim Crouch, out of bed. Judy, it's me. Boy, he is really stuck in there. Only your mother, you know? They kept mentioning breaking up the floor. That wasn't going to work. There's no way you're going to punch through six inches of concrete with a live cat underneath you without doing injury to the cat. When you push down his head to push him backwards, his bottom would get bigger. It was like pushing on a cork in a wine bottle. He wasn't going to come out. I think I got an idea how we can get him out. So I figured if the cat wasn't going to do it on his own, we'd have to back him up for him. Do me a favor, kind of clean this out and, and fill it up with real soapy water. Chief Crouch came up with the idea of snaking a rope through and then using a bug sprayer to flood the vent with soapy water. I also got a bigger lunch. So that he'd be a little slimmer and a little easier to, to basically move around or slide around in there. Am I getting him? When I called the station to see if I could get somebody to give me a hand, two of the volunteers offered to come down with the fire truck. Once they were totally ready and had everything set up, then I went ahead and anesthetized him. Just kind of moving a little bit. Okay. All right, honey bunny. It's all right. Hang in there. He was not happy about getting the injection, but a small needle in his shoulder was nothing compared to being wedged in this tight space and not having food and water for the past 10 hours, which for him is a big ordeal. My mom's cats don't miss any meals. Can we up the legs? In order to get to the hind legs of the cat, we had to actually push him up into the hole farther. And that didn't make him too happy. Uh, Dad, yeah, go ahead and start the pull. Real slow. Real easy. All right, he's not coming. When we couldn't move him with the soapy water, right. that's when I thought that the cat wasn't going to make it out. Hang on a minute. Immediately, Jim Crouch said stop and put his hand back in there and was feeling around, and there was an area where the duct kind of jutted out a little bit more than the rest of it. And he felt that the honey bunny's shoulder was getting hung up right there. Judy? Yeah. Have yes. you got some, like, like, petroleum jelly or something? Yes. We went and got some petroleum jelly and lubed the cat all up with it. Any petroleum jelly. Uh, like, won't make them too happy, but it'll make them fly out. All right, guys, you ready? You ready to go, Jimmy? Go ahead and pull. All right. Maybe push it right yet. All right, you're almost there. Come on. Not too much longer. <sighs> Between the petroleum jelly and the soapy water, we were able to pull them back about 10 feet. But then he was starting to get a little stuck again. Hang on a minute. Finger over that nail. Break his legs. Break his legs. I heard them mention that they may have to break the cat's legs. have to do? Get him out. I can get him back together. With that, I was out the door like a shot. All right, we got feet. He's coming. We got feet. We see the cat. Pat, one of the firemen, he was able to scruff the cat and get his head up, but then he met some resistance. You want to pull him out? I've got him. All right, here, I'll, I'll swap, swap with you guys. Okay, honey bunny. Almost there. I get the oxygen. JB walks over to the vent, and he grabs a hold of honey bunny from the shoulder area and starts manipulating him, and next thing you know, he's out. He's <laughs> out. Yay, right. JB! And immediately, we were all cheering, and yay, thank goodness, good job, JB, got him out. Yeah, he's coming around. He hasn't moved a whole lot. He kicked a little bit, so you could tell he was doing okay. He was coming out of the anesthetic. And that was the biggest sigh of relief I think I've had in a long time. Yeah, what is he looking at? I think he's avoiding Insects, birds, yeah, avoidance. <laughs> avoidance, he's just looking the other way. I just cannot imagine if I lost that cat. I have a saying that I use with my children at school that they're crying in their Kool-Aid. I'd be crying in my Kool-Aid from now on. Thank goodness you were home fine. <laughs> My mom's love of animals while I was growing up is part of the reason why I ended up being a veterinarian. My mom says now if she had it to do over again, she would have 
one child and a lot more animals instead of one animal and three children, but I don't think she really means it. Peaches, scruffy or shameless. Peaches, want a treat? Well, we don't normally respond on trapped animals like this, but sometimes there's a benefit of living next to the fire chief, and this was one of them. My enabler. <laughs> Yeah, well, who, where'd I get them all? These people are wonderful. They're all volunteers. They come like Galahad. Like, well, there are knights in shining armor. They just drive fire trucks today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're good.